Number 34, Sam Philp. Um, the draft, Boltar, the one that we stole from Richmond, whatever you want to call it. It's interesting because, you know, there's a big fuss about the draft and it comes and it goes. And really, once the draft happens, everyone's on a level playing field. Yeah, Matt Rowell's a gun, pick one. But, you know, listen, none of them have done anything in terms of the draftees. And what I love of what I've seen from Sam Philp is, I mean, just that that burst, that speed. And it's not just once he explodes out of stoppage, it's once he actually gets into open space. You can't catch him. Um, he plays with the confidence. I mentioned this in the Sam Ramsey video, but he plays with his confidence. He plays with, I don't know how to explain it. It's like he's got a good posture. As he, as he breaks out of the pack, he's got like a strong presence about him. And I like it. I like what I'm seeing. Um, I think what he's probably got to work on, and I'm sure you know he'd be doing it, he's just... And Paddy Dow's in a similar boat. They've both got this explosiveness, but finishing that kick after you create space for yourself is is obviously a challenge for him, especially when you get to that AFL level, when you've got less time and there's a little bit more pressure. But yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this kid playing games this year. Um, I'm not sure about round one, and, and I love the the advice that Kripa has and, and Walshie and, and all of these boys have given him, and you see the messages at training when they're talking in that, you know, don't put a limit on what you can do. You know, someone like Sam Philp, you should be training and practicing like you're going to play around one. And that's important. We on the outside, it's easy for us to say, oh, you know, Philp, he won't play until, you know, round 10. But on the inside, you don't want him to have that attitude. Um, and I, I hope he does push for selection and put himself in the mix. It, it's obviously going to be a pretty hard midfield uh, to break into or, or defense to break into if that's where they want to play him. But yeah, I, I like what I'm seeing at training. I think everyone for the most part has have seen those flashes and uh, like, like we drafted him and I understand what we saw in him. He's, you know, the message I'm trying to convey here and, and that's a big tick for me and, and the club were bold in their draft strategy and obviously getting camp and, and picking up Sam Philp. And look, let's just see how it plays out. There's no pressure on him. Such is our list now that I think we're going to have to adjust a little bit because we are used to drafting guys and just putting games into them early. Whereas now we've got, you know, a good young core who have played a certain amount of games who are now, you know, early veterans. And and guys like Sam Philp and Ramsey and, and Honey, they come in, they don't have to play games early. And you know, there's positives and negatives to playing games early, but I think I like the situation that we're in right now. We've got depth across all three lines, probably more so in defense and to an extent the midfield. Um, but yeah, look, good luck to him. Hope he goes well. I'm sure he will go well. He looks like a good kid. Uh, he speaks like a good kid. And, you know, I, I just have faith in the environment that we have. Uh, our leadership group, I have faith in them. I have faith in the guys that are around these young fellas that they're going to keep them on the straight path. So with that being said, what about you? Where do you see Sam Philp impacting in 2020? Let me know in the comments below.